name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather this morning to offer the greatest prayer we have as Catholics, the holy sacrifice of the Mass for the repose of the soul of our beloved Angelo Vicentin. We pray also in a special way for the consolation of his family members, especially his children, Paula, Bruno, Liam, and his grandchildren. We also welcome in a special way all family members and friends who are joining us for this service uh, through the live stream. Cari fratelli e sorelle, siamo convocati oggi per celebrare questa Santa Messa per il riposo del nostro caro Angelo Vicentin e per la consolazione della sua famiglia. Un speciale benvenuto a tutti i familiari che si uniscono a noi oggi dall'Italia e dalla Francia, anche se siamo lontani, a questo momento siamo uniti in preghiera per nostro caro Angelo. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, 
a time to plant and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to uproot the build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak. God has made everything appropriate to its time and has set eternity into their hearts without a person ever discovering from beginning to end the work which God has done. I recognize that there is nothing better than to be glad and to do well during life. For every person I know that whatever God does will endure forever. There is no adding to it or taking from it. Thus has God done that he may be revered. What is now has already been, and what is to be already is. And God restores what would otherwise be displaced. The word of the Lord. to the Romans. Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, yet died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for just person. Though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, 
but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Quel tempo Gesù disse ai suoi discepoli, non sia turbato il vostro cuore, abbiate fede in Dio e abbiate fede anche in me. Nella casa del Padre mio vi sono molti posti, se no ve l'avrei detto. Io vado a prepararvi un posto, quando sarò andato e vi avrò preparato un posto, Ritornerò e vi prenderò con me, perché siate anche voi dove sono io. E del luogo dove io vado voi conoscete la via. Gli disse Tommaso, Signore, non sappiamo dove vai, e come possiamo conoscere la via? Gli disse Gesù, io sono la via, la verità e la vita. Nessuno viene al Padre se non per mezzo di me. Parola del This morning, with heavy hearts at the passing of our beloved Angelo, we weep and mourn his passing. At the same time, as Christians, today we are also gathered in hope, because the Lord assures us that our earthly passing is not the end of our lives, but rather that he has prepared an eternal home for us in his Father's house. And deep down, every one of us has that common desire to live, regardless of our religion, regardless of what we might profess to believe. Deep down, every human being has that deep desire to live, perhaps not in a world that is as broken as our own, or with the different sufferings and sorrows which they've had to bear, but deep down there is a desire for something more, for a greater life. And today Jesus assures us that while we don't have the answer to death, he himself is our answer. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's so beautiful, I am the way. We ask ourselves, what happens to us when we pass from this world? Where do we go? How do we find our way? Jesus says he comes for us. 
and he himself is the way, and he will guide us by hand to his heavenly Father's home. And so even now, when we are in a relationship with the Lord, we are already in a sense in heaven, because that encounter, that friendship with Jesus is heaven itself. More than a place, heaven is that loving embrace with our Savior, Jesus Christ. And to today, the Lord comes for Angelo and he embraces him and he keeps him safe now for all of eternity. Our Christian vocation then is in this time on earth to come to know the Lord, to love the Lord, and to serve the Lord in our brothers and sisters, those that are around us first of all, and those we encounter through the course of our lives, by using the gifts which God has given us, our God-given talents, to make the world a better place, to make it a more beautiful place, to bring truth, to bring goodness, and to bring laughter, to bring the Lord's joy to those around us. And we know that in the life of our dear brother Angelo, he did just that, a man filled with great joy, sharing often, you know, laughter with others and our faith is about joy. If it is a true and living faith, even in the midst of our trials, it means that we rejoice, we live with joy. Because our friendships, our relationships with family, are a sign of God's love for us, and they're actually a foretaste of heaven itself. And that is why we are we're called to make our home a peaceful, beautiful and loving place. It is meant to be a foretaste of heaven, of when we come to meet the Lord and all his angels and saints face to face. And Angelo also used his, uh, his ability, his God-given ability to work with his hands, right, in this trade of terrazzo. And this beautiful church which we're in is also the work of many people's hands. And he used this gift to make the world a better place. He used this gift to make homes a better place for people and to make the gift God had given him fruitful for the good of others. And this is something that we should be proud of. And it's something that uh, Bruno and Liam continue uh, to carry on that legacy today, which their father uh, you know, raised them in, which he taught them. And that is a great thing. The common image of the Christian vocation is, is one of discipleship with the Lord. But there's also another image which is used by the spiritual writers of the church, and that is of the journey or of the pilgrimage. That our earthly life is like a journey from where we are now to our true homeland, which is heaven. And Angelo, many years ago, left his native town of Loria in Treviso, Italia, to go to a foreign land where he did not know the language, you know, and he made a great leap of faith to come here. But I believe that Angelo, like many other immigrants, Italian immigrants who came, they came with a trust. That is, they came over with the Lord as their companion, with faith that God would provide for them, that God would see them through this journey. And indeed he did. And Angelo established a great life for himself and then for his family here. And like many of the other immigrants who came, made also Vancouver the place that it is today. And so, dear brothers and sisters, our life is one of pilgrimage towards our true homeland, which is heaven. And just like Angelo desired something greater, something more for his life, and made the choice to come here, 
So we also desire something greater, which ultimately can only be fulfilled by that final and personal encounter with Jesus face to face. This will satisfy all the deepest desires and longings of our hearts. And so today we rejoice that Angelo is not lost to us, that the ties of friendship and affection which have knit us together throughout our lives with him are not broken, but now they continue in a spiritual way. You praying for him and he, you know, with God interceding for you to call down God's blessings from heaven upon you, that you may also walk your earthly journey in safety, in good health and prosperity. And so today the Lord says to his dear son Angelo, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into your eternal reward. E vediamo qui sulla bandiera che il motto dei Trevisani nel mondo è vicini o lontani, sempre Trevisani. Queste sono bellissime parole perché comunicano la verità che noi portiamo la nostra patria in cuore. Anche se andiamo in altri paesi lontani, abbiamo sempre la nostra patria nativa nel nostro cuore. E anche bellissimo com'è quella patria, la nostra vera patria nativa come cristiani è il paradiso, dove incontreremo il Signore con tutti i nostri cari che ci hanno preceduti, con tutti gli angeli e i santi. E oggi possiamo ringraziare il Signore per la bellissima vita del nostro fratello Angelo, e oggi il Signore dice a Angelo, vieni, servo buono e fedele, entra nel paradiso, entra nella promessa del tuo Signore. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. So I invite you now to rise as we offer prayers of petition for Angelo and all of our beloved deceased. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Angelo, receive the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death, we pray to the Lord. Our brother Angelo was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet, we pray to the Lord. For Margarita Vicentin, our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of Angelo, that the risen Lord may grant them comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief, we pray to the Lord. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord.
Brave brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Helen and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Angelo, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, 
especially Margarita Byzantine, and to all who are pleasing to you after passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace. I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
On behalf of the Byzantine family, we'd like to take a moment to thank all who have offered their continuous support through this difficult time. We are incredibly grateful. Um, it is our honor to be here to speak about the life of our Nono, Angelo Byzantine. Our Nono was born one of 11 children in his home of Loria, Treviso, Italy, on September 4th, 1930. It was on his family's farm where he developed a strong work ethic, familial values, and traditions. Growing up during the war wasn't easy. It was a hard and simple life, but it was still filled with joy. He spent a short time serving his country in the military before following his brother to Canada in 1955 to help provide for his family. Like many, his voyage took 17 days 10 days by boat to Halifax, and seven days by train to Vancouver. Though the journey had been tough, he was grateful for all of the opportunities Canada had to offer. Our nono was a part of a generation of persevering Italian immigrants. In 1961, he brought the love of his life, Margarita, our nona, to Canada. They were married on November 25th of that year and started a beautiful family together. Angelo and Rita had three children, Paola, Bruno, and Liam, who were taught the same traditions and values that their parents had brought back with them. And soon, Bruno and Liam married, welcoming Candace and Liliana into the family. Angelo left his footprint just about everywhere in Vancouver. He worked in Terrazzo, and his work made the city that much more beautiful. He always enjoyed pointing out the buildings that he had worked on and told stories about those jobs. This work became a legacy carried on by his sons and admired by all. Along with his work, Arnono had many other passions. He loved birds, especially canaries, so much so that he had become a champion canary breeder. It was always a delight to hear the birds' beautiful songs when visiting our Nono and Nona. When he was still able to, Angelo spent a lot of time in the garden. It was like walking into a produce store. There were exotic fruits and veggies everywhere. Even the animals quite enjoyed it, including the bear that once ate all of his grapes. <laughs> the backyard felt like a paradise. As kids, we would always have lots of fun playing and gardening in the backyard, as well as helping Nono make vino in the cantina. Nono lived for the moments when his friends and family came to visit, reminiscing on old stories and sharing the best of laughs. The house was always open and his friends had become a part of his family. Our Nono was a true comedian. He loved to tell jokes and just make you smile and laugh. In fact, if you laughed at one of his jokes, he would repeat it about a hundred more times. <laughs> he always kept the kids entertained, pulling many light-hearted pranks and creating fun memories with his children. Though Angelo was happiest spending time with his grandchildren, Alicia, myself, Derek, and Vanessa. He took every opportunity to express how proud of us he was and we have many fond memories with him. 
Vanessa will miss cuddling with him. Derek and Alicia will miss playing their card tournaments with him. For me, I will miss our morning breakfast together and saying bottom mail to each other as our way of goodbye. We will all miss his opera serenades and enjoying a watermelon together on a hot summer day sitting on the front steps. Angelo was not only a husband, father, nono, brother, uncle, and friend, but a man devoted to his family, faith, and tradition. He was proud to be Italian and was a long-standing member of the Trevisani del Mundo. He thoroughly enjoyed the Trevisani summer picnics at Confed, where his recognizable laugh could be heard across the park. Angelo was one of the most generous and selfless men you could ever meet. Everything he did, he did for his family and friends. He had dedicated himself to building a better life and is the benchmark of strength. He is a man who gave everything for the ones he loved. At 90 years old, he had lived a full and rewarding life. And in his final days, we were blessed to have the opportunity to say goodbye. He told us to not cry and that he was happy to go. One of the last things he had said was that when we're walking down the sidewalk, he will always be right there behind us. With his passing, we had lost the other half of our family core. We are devastated, but we can take solace in remembering the good times and knowing that he is reunited with our, his beloved Rita. We are fortunate to hear the church bells that rang for our nono. I'm grateful that he was recognized with a mass held in his honor in his hometown of Loria. Ti voglio bene, nono.
Friends, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Angelo in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Angelo in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Canada.